In the twenty-seventh year of Jeroboam king of Israel, Azariah the son of Amaziah king of Judah began to reign. He was sixteen years old when he began to reign, and he reigned fifty-two years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jecoliah of Jerusalem, and he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah had done. Nevertheless, the high places were not taken away. The people still sacrificed and burned incense on the high places. And the Lord struck the king so that he was a leper to the day of his death, and he dwelt in a separate house. And Jotham the king's son was over the household, governing the people of the land. Now the rest of the acts of Azariah and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And Azariah slept with his fathers, and they buried him with his fathers in the city of David, and Jotham his son reigned in his stead. In the thirty-eighth year of Azariah king of Judah, Zechariah the son of Jeroboam reigned over Israel in Samaria six months, and he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, as his fathers had done. He did not depart from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which he made Israel to sin. Shalom, the son of Jabesh, conspired against him and struck him down at Ibliam, and killed him, and reigned in his stead. Now the rest of the deeds of Zechariah, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the king of Israel. This was the promise of the Lord which he gave to Jehu, your sons shall sit upon the throne of Israel to the fourth generation. And so it came to pass. Shalom, the son of Jabesh, began to reign in the thirty-ninth year of Uzziah, king of Judah, and he reigned one month in Samaria. Then Manahem, the son of Gadi, came up from Terza and came to Samaria, and he struck down Shalom, the son of Jabesh, in Samaria, and slew him, and reigned in his stead. Now the rest of the deeds of Shalom, and the conspiracy which he made, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. At that time, Menahem sacked Tapua and all who were in it, and its territory from Terza on, because they did not open it to him, therefore he sacked it, and he ripped up all the women in it who were with child. In the thirty-ninth year of Azariah, king of Judah, Menahem, the son of Gadi, began to reign over Israel, and he reigned ten years in Samaria, and he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. He did not depart all his days from all the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which he made Israel to sin. Pul, the king of Assyria, came against the land, and Menahem gave Pul a thousand talents of silver, that he might help him to confirm his hold on the royal power. Menahem exacted the money from Israel, that is, from all the wealthy men, fifty shekels of silver from every man, to give to the king of Assyria. So the king of Assyria turned back and did not stay there in the land. Now the rest of the deeds of Menahem and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? And Menahem slept with his fathers, and Pekiah his son reigned in his stead. In the fifth year of Azariah, king of Judah, Pekiah the son of Menahem began to reign over Israel in Samaria, and he reigned two years. And he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. He did not turn away from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which he made Israel to sin. And Pekah, the son of Romalia, his captain, conspired against him with fifty men of the Gileadites, and slew him in Samaria, in the citadel of the king's house. He slew him, and reigned in his stead. Now the rest of the deeds of Pekiah, and all that he did, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. In the fifty-second year of Azariah, king of Judah, Pekah, the son of Romalia, began to reign over Israel and Samaria, and he reigned twenty years. And he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. He did not depart from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which he made Israel to sin. In the days of Pekah, king of Israel, tiglath pileser king of Assyria, came and captured Ijon, abel beth Makah. Genoath, Kadesh, Hazor, Gilead, and Galilee, all the land of Naphtali, and he carried the people captive to Assyria. Then Hosea the son of Elah made a conspiracy against Pekah the son of Romalia, and struck him down, and slew him, and reigned in his stead, in the twentieth year of Jotham the son of Uzziah. Now the rest of the acts of Pekah, and all that he did, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. 
In the second year of Pekah, the son of Remaliah, king of Israel, Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, began to reign. He was twenty-five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok, and he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, according to all that his father Uzziah had done. Nevertheless, the high places were not removed. The people still sacrificed and burned incense on the high places. He built the upper gate of the house of the Lord. Now the rest of the acts of Jotham and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? In those days, the Lord began to send Rezin, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Ramalia, against Judah. Jotham slept with his fathers, and was buried with his fathers, in the city of David his father, and Ahaz his son reigned in his stead. In the seventeenth year of Pekah, the son of Ramalia, Ahaz the son of Jotham, king of Judah, began to reign. Ahaz was twenty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. And he did not do what was right in the eyes of the Lord his God, as his father David had done, but he walked in the way of the kings of Israel. He even burned his son as an offering according to the abominable practices of the nations whom the Lord drove out before the people of Israel. And he sacrificed and burned incense on the high places, and on the hills, and under every green tree. Then Rezin, king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Ramalia, king of Israel, came up to wage war on Jerusalem. And they besieged Ahaz, but could not conquer him. At that time the king of Edom recovered Elath for Edom, and drove the men of Judah from Elath. And the Edomites came to Elath, where they dwell to this day. So Ahaz sent messengers to tiglath Pileser, king of Assyria, saying, I am your servant and your son. Come up and rescue me from the hand of the king of Syria and from the hand of the king of Israel, who are attacking me. Ahaz also took the silver and gold that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasures of the king's house, and sent a present to the king of Assyria. And the king of Assyria listened to him. The king of Assyria marched up against Damascus, and took it, carrying its people captive to Ker, and he killed Rezin. When king Ahaz went to Damascus to meet tiglath pileser king of Assyria, he saw the altar that was at Damascus. And King Ahaz sent to Uriah the priest a model of the altar, and its pattern, exact in all its details. And Uriah the priest built the altar, in accordance with all that King Ahaz had sent from Damascus. So Uriah the priest made it, before King Ahaz arrived from Damascus. And when the king came from Damascus, the king viewed the altar. Then the king drew near to the altar and went up on it, and burned the burnt offering and his cereal offering and poured his drink offering, and threw the blood of his peace offering upon the altar. And the bronze altar, which was before the Lord, he removed from the front of the house, from the place between his altar and the house of the Lord, and put it on the north side of his altar. And King Ahaz commanded Uriah the priest, saying, Upon the great altar burn the morning burnt offering, and the evening cereal offering, and the king's burnt offering, and his cereal offering, with the burnt offering of all the people of the land, and their cereal offering, and their drink offering, and throw upon it all the blood of the burnt offering, and all the blood of the sacrifice. But the bronze altar shall be for me to inquire by. Uriah the priest did all this as King Ahaz commanded. And King Ahaz cut off the frames of the stands and removed the labor from them. And he took down the sea from off the bronze oxen that were under it, and put it upon a pediment of stone, and he and the covered way for the Sabbath, which had been built inside the palace, and the other entrance for the king, he removed from the house of the Lord, because of the king of Assyria. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaz, which he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And Ahaz slept with his fathers, and was buried with his fathers in the city of David, and Hezekiah his son reigned in his stead. For the Lord will vindicate his people, and have compassion on his servants. The idols of the nations are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. They have eyes, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Nor is there any breath in their mouths. Like them be those who make them. Yes, everyone who trusts in them. 
O house of Israel, bless the Lord. O house of Aaron, bless the Lord. O house of Levi, bless the Lord. You that fear the Lord, bless the Lord. Blessed be the Lord from Zion, he who dwells in Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple, where all Jews come together. I have said nothing secretly. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, bear witness to the wrong. But, I, but if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Annas then sent him bound to Caiaphas the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They said to him, Are not you also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a kinsman of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it, and at once the cock crowed. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the praetorium. It was early. They themselves did not enter the praetorium, so that they might not be defiled, but might eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not an evildoer, we would not have handed him over. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. This was to fulfill the word which Jesus had spoken to show by what death he was to die. Pilate entered the praetorium again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingship is not of this world. If my kingship were of this world, my servants would fight, that I might not be handed over to the Jews. But my kingship is not from this world. Pilate said to him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no crime in him, but you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. Will you have me release for you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. King Ahaz is seduced by the world. Not only does he give himself over to the abominable practice of the nations and pay tribute to a foreign power, he also tries to import foreign religious customs into the temple itself. He has a new Syrian-style altar installed in the temple, and he himself officiates at the sacrifices as if he were a priest. Clearly, Ahaz is a king who acts as though he is God. In the gospel, we see God refusing to act as the kings of the world, for Jesus' kingship is of a much higher order. Rather than asserting royal authority to get his way, Jesus holds back the exercise of his royal rights in order to do his father's will. Who acts as the true king, Ahaz or Jesus? In what ways can you say true power and self-possession is exercised more by what Jesus does not do or say? Why does Jesus refuse to act like a king, and in what way is that a critique of how the world wields power and authority? The Jerusalem authorities who seek to kill Jesus likewise are capitulating to the world and its system. They are trying to use the Roman legal apparatus to murder Jesus, since they cannot put anyone to death under their own legal authority.